Hi everyone, this is Q and for today's video I wanted to do something slightly different than the other puzzle we have been solving so far. Today's video is more of a follow-up of the previous video about the functional equation. So for those who didn't watch this video, I recommend to watch it on the link above. And this video is about visualizing the solution of the functional equation we saw before. So not only visualizing all the solution of this uh, functional equation, but also understanding why we are having the, the equality between the two terms, uh, one being the integral and the other being the product. So as a reminder, the functional equation we were uh, seeing last time is the integral from x minus y to x plus y of f is supposed to be equal to the product fx multiplied by fy. And as a reminder, we were able to prove that the solution of this equation are the solution, the zero function first, then all the two divided by omega sine of omega x with uh, the omega being strictly greater than zero. We also have the linear function that transform x into 2x. And finally, we have all the function 2 divided by omega, hyperbolic sine of omega x for all omega greater than zero. What we're going to do is that we're going to plot on a graph all these different functions to see how they are actually related to one another. So as you have seen, there are four types of solution. And what may come as a surprise is that when you plot uh, all of them one after the next, you can see that there is a kind of continuity between uh, these four solutions. So let's first plot the graph. And now let's represent the first solution, which is the function that is equal to zero everywhere. And as you can see, there is nothing surprising with this function. This can be represented by a perfectly horizontal line that is actually merged with the horizontal axis. Now, what we're going to do is that we're going to switch to the set of solutions that are equal to 2 divided by omega of sine omega x. And we first start with a value of omega that is extremely high. And as you can see, it is very hard to see a difference between uh, the function that is zero or this new set of function with the sign. So when you have an extremely high omega, what's happening is that you have two divided by omega that is extremely low. So it's very hard to distinguish this new solution from the function zero. And now slowly, what we're going to do is that we are slowly going to decrease the value of omega until we arrive to the value of omega, which is equal to one. In which case we have a very simple function. This is just uh, the function 2 multiplied by sinus x, which has an amplitude of 2. And as you can see, as this uh, slope equal to 2 at the origin. But let's see what's happening now when we continue decreasing the value of omega. And this time we're going to decrease the value of omega up to a value very, very close to 0. So because of the factor 2 divided by omega in front of the function, the amplitude of this function is going to go to infinity, but at any moment we still have a slope at the origin that is equal to 2. And what you can see is that the function is getting so large, but still with the same slope at the origin, that what we are actually starting to see is the linear function that transforms x into 2x. And it turns out that this linear function is actually part of the solution of the functional equation. So you see this transition from first the function equal to zero everywhere to all the sine function solution. And now this transition from the sine function to the solution to the uh, solution fx equal to x. And what is even more interesting is that this transition actually doesn't stop here. So if we are switching right now to the set of uh, hyperbolic sine solution and we are going to start with a value of omega that is extremely low and we are going to start increasing this value little by little until we reach the value of omega equal to one and as you can see this uh, linear function that we uh, started with fx equal 2x slowly and almost continuously transform into the 2 multiplied by hyperbolic sine of x 
And when I say continuous transition, I want here to be uh, very careful because the notion of continuity between function uh, has a meaning in mathematics. And this is not exactly this kind of continuity that I'm talking about, but this is more like the intuitive continuity that uh, we can see here in the sense that we can see the curve that continuously, at least in this very limited uh, domain, uh, is transitioning between one function to the next. And now if we keep increasing the value of omega for this set of functions, we can see that the curve is getting closer and closer to the vertical axis until it almost merged completely with it. And this is where we are actually reaching the uh, limit of all the possible solutions for this equation. So for those who want to visualize this transition again, we are going to play it, but this time backward. So we start with an extreme solution with the hyperbolic sine function with an extremely high value of omega. And then we start decreasing the value of omega until we reach omega equal to 1. And then we decrease the value of omega again until we reach a value that is close to zero. Now we are at the linear uh, function that is solution of this equation. And now we enter the set of solutions that are in the form of the sine, but with an extremely low value of omega. And we start decreasing the value of omega until we reach omega equal to one. And we keep increasing the value of omega until we reach infinity and the uh, functions slowly start to merge into the function zero. So now what I would like to see with you in this video is a kind of a, a visual representation of this equality. So for this, we are going to go back to the uh, sine solution with omega equal to one. And what we're going to do is to choose an arbitrary number x and show based on this function representation what should be the value f of x. Okay, now what we're going to do is to represent the line that uh, crossed the origin and has a slope equal to one. And we are going to see later why we are representing this line. Now what we do is that we take a value of y that starts from zero and goes up to an arbitrary number. And as you can see, we started drawing two area. The first area in blue represent the integral from x minus y to x plus y of f. And the green area represent the product f of x multiplied by f of y. So the way we were able to represent the blue area is kind of obvious. We know that the integral of a curve is actually the area between the horizontal axis and the curve. But for the green area, it's a tiny bit tricky. How are we able to represent f of x multiplied by f of y when normally the vertical axis is supposed to represent the f of x or f of y value, whereas the horizontal axis is supposed to represent the x and y value? Well, the trick that we were able to use is to represent y on the horizontal axis, project it vertically to the uh, curve that represents the function f to obtain f of y on the vertical axis. And then, and this is the point of using this uh, uh, line of slope equal to one, we're able to use that line by projecting the value f of y from the vertical axis up to horizontal axis. And this is why you can see this value of f of y on the horizontal axis here. And based on that, we can see by tracing a line f of x from the vertical axis and f of y from the horizontal axis, we're able to draw this square, this green square that represents the area f of x multiplied by f of y. And you can actually see visually that this area look pretty similar. So I am calculating the number on the left part of the uh, graph. So you can see the value in real time. And now what we're going to do is to uh, change the value of x while fixing the value of y. And let's see how the value of both area is changing over time. As you can see, when we increase the value of x, because of the shape of the curve that is going below the x axis, we are having the area that is slowly decreasing until becoming negative. And then when we are going back, we see this area increasing again. And you can see that at any given moment, the value of both area is exactly the same. Now let's fix the value of x and y. And what we're going to do instead is to change the value of omega 
So we are switching to the different solution. So if I start decreasing the value of omega up to infinity, you can see the area that keep evolving, but still having the same value. And we are reaching the solution that transform x into 2x. And now we are going to the uh, domain of the hyperbolic sine solution. And the area is still the same. And now let's go back to the solution, which is the linear function. And we are coming back to the sine solution. So I hope you all appreciate the interesting feature that we were uh, finding about this uh, uh, function that are solution of the functional equation. So we started with a, a very simple functional equation that can be written in a very uh, simple way. And what we are getting from that is a set of function that we really didn't expect to look like this. And we didn't really expect them to nicely transition from one another's. And what I also find interesting is that with a couple of tricks, we can actually nicely visualize what's happening here between uh, the two uh, terms of the equality, one with the integral and the other term with the product. And I think this is interesting to see that these two area, when we see them evolving, when we change the value of x and y and the value of omega, it looks like they could be different, but they're actually completely equal at any given moment. So that's it for today. I hope you appreciated this video and please let me know in the comments if you would like to see more video like this. And if you really like this video, don't hesitate to give it a like.